let's have a look at some of the Union Find source code. So here's a link to the source code. You can find it on my GitHub repository at github.com slash williamfizah slash data structures. I also have a bunch of other data structures from past videos. And before we dive into the code, make sure you watch the other videos pertaining to the union find, as I will be making some references to them. Okay, let's dig in. Here we are inside the code, and I have a class called union find, and it's got a few instance variables, so let's go over them. Uh, the first is size, it's just how many elements we have in our union find. Then I have these two arrays, one called ID and one called size. So the interest, well, the more interesting one is ID. And ID at I is that array I talked about, which um, at index I points to the parent node uh, of I. And if ID at I is equal to I, then we know that I is a root node. So we're essentially keeping track of all of these, like, uh, tree-like structures right inside an array, which is practical. And also because we create a bijection between our elements and uh, some numbers, this is how we're able to access them through this uh, ID array. And just for convenience, I track the number of components. That's sometimes some uh, useful information you might want. So if you create a union find, well, you need to know how many elements are going to be inside your union find. And I make sure that we have a, a positive number of elements, otherwise I throw an exception. Then I go ahead and initialize some instance variables, and I initialize id to uh, equal i. So initially everyone is a root node, and every component has a size of 1. So find is pretty simple. It's given a, a node, it finds which component it belongs to and also does path compression along the way. So if we're at P and we want to find uh, the root node of P, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to find the root node using this one while loop. So we initialize a new variable called root to P and then we loop until the root is now equal to id at root, so aka this is uh, a root node or a self loop that we found and so we can stop and the root is stored in well the variable we called root. And then what we do is we do the path compression. This is what I talked about in the last video. So uh, starting back at p we assign everything from id at p to equal the root and this is what compresses the path and gives us that nice amortized time complexity. You can also do this recursively, but I don't like having the overhead and uh, doing things iteratively can be slightly faster. Okay, so now we have these simple methods we can call. So if uh, P and Q are inside the same component, this will return true because uh, the root at p and the root at q will be equal. Otherwise, this will return false. And ca just calling find will do um, path compression. So even if we're just checking if two components are connected um, and it calls the find method, then we're compressing the path. Uh, same thing here. If we decide to find the component size uh, relative to some index p, then when we index into the size and call find, we'll find, well, we'll find the root, but at the same time, we'll also do path compression, which is nice. And I would just like to note that the, the root nodes are the ones who will always contain the size because they're the ones that are found, well, if you want to think about it, like at the end of the chain. Size just returns the number of components in our unit find disjoint set. Components, number of components, that's pretty self-explanatory. 
And the unify method is the last interesting method. So this is the one that uh, well unifies two components together. So so first what we do is we find uh, what the root node for P is and what the root node for Q is. And if the root nodes are equal, then they're already in the same group and we don't do anything. Otherwise, uh, uh, by convention, I just merge the smaller group into the larger group. Although, I know some people like to keep the theoretical largest path in a component and then uh, merge according to that. That may be uh, slightly more efficient, but it's more work. So I just like to merge the smaller group into the larger group. And also, uh, since the roots are different and we're merging, we know that the number of components or sets must have decreased by one. So that's why at the bottom here, I, I say the number of components uh, subtract that by one, because we know we're going to have one less component. So this whole time uh, inside this class, I've been treating P and Q as integers and not as elements, uh, like letters that, I, that we saw in, our, in the slides. And this is because of that bijection. I would do a lookup to find out what maps to the element P, and that should give me an integer, and what maps to the element Q, and then I could use those uh, with this uh, union find data structure I've created and turn everything into the, the realm of numbers instead of dealing with objects and having uh, all this more complexity. It's much easier to have an array based union find. Uh, you could also have a pointer based union find with node objects, but this is really nice and it's a really clean implementation. Alright, uh, that's it for the union find. Definitely my favorite data structure. Um, and if you guys have any questions, just drop a comment and I'll try to get back to you. So thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time.